So here's the story. A little while ago, my son and daughter-in-law asked me, you know, if I can help them build a cabinet because they need some better storage in the kitchen. And I said, sure. And a few days later, before we even began to discuss design, that popped up on the street a couple of houses down. And I took a picture and I'm like, how about that? And they're like, sure. Free is very good. And in this video, I'm going to strip and reapply some finish on the top because it's pretty beat up and we're going to paint the bottom white because that's what my daughter-in-law wants. She wanted the whole thing painted. I talked her into keeping the top finish natural or stained maybe. I think that'll look better. We'll see as the project unfolds. So this appears to be some sort of a sideboard or buffet of, I don't know how old it is, but it's a lot of solid wood. It's a, a Broyhill piece, which is a name I recognize. I don't know that much about it, but I did discover on the back that it's made in the United States. These doors are solid wood. The front is all solid wood. The trim is all solid wood. I thought the top was solid wood, and I think it still is, but it's got a veneer on it too, which is weird. So here's the front edge and here's this knot, but the knot doesn't go here. So this is some sort of a veneer. And if you look closely at the end, that's end grain. This is all side grain. And then over here is end grain again. And you can just see the top edge of the veneer that they put on top. Yeah, we're probably gonna have some weird camera angles in this video because this is a bit of a beast. It's five feet long, 60, 61 inches long. It's uh, 34 inches tall. It's 18 inches front to back. And I've got it on my assembly table, which is itself three feet tall. So the whole thing is like, you know, 65 inches off the ground. So it's gonna be hard to get the camera to show the top, but because I'm refinishing it, I want it at a good working height. So I've, I've got it on here and we're just gonna to have to work with that. So as I said, it's beat up. There's a burn mark here. There's scratch marks. There's these little dots all over the place. I wonder if they had a cat or if somebody was just throwing darts at it. It's on this drawer, it's on this door, it's on this drawer, it's on this drawer. Every one of them has got these little dots that need to be filled before I paint it. Probably should have said this at the beginning, but I'm not a professional wood refinisher. I think I'm a pretty darn good woodworker. Refinishing is a whole speciality. I've watched a couple of people on YouTube and they do magic with repairs and matching grain and colors and toning and all that sort of stuff. I'm just muddling through on a piece that we don't really care that much about. We want it to look halfway decent, but you know, it's never gonna be super duper. And anyways, I'm just taking you along for the ride like I always do. This is the back edge of the top. There's some veneer that's split. So I'm just going to try forcing some glue in. How am I gonna do that? Oops. I'm just gonna try to, I know it's, oh, I can get that in there, good. Get the toothpick in. Shove some glue in there. I figure, you know, if this doesn't work, I can always paint it. Use some tape to clamp that down. Right here, there's a big chunk missing from the side and I'm gonna work on that first because I think I might take several layers. I was just picked up some of this wood filler, not sponsored, never used it before. I was just staring at the rows in the big box store and picked one that I hope is okay. And now I'm gonna go read the instructions. Not exactly super goopy, but I was hoping for something a bit thick because this is a vertical surface. So next I'm gonna go on and work on all these holes. And yes, I did uh, dust and then wipe down a, with a damp rag the whole thing. You know, the funny thing is, is my son has two cats, so it might get beat up again as soon as we put it in his apartment. On the top, I'm gonna to start at 80 grit and then start stripping this down. Once I realized it had a veneer, I realized I actually have to be careful. I, th I thought I had like an inch and a half of solid wood to play with and I'm like, oh, I can do whatever I want. But I, I do have to watch it, but I do, I do wanna strip this down and see if I can get it a little bit less beat up looking before we put another finish on. So that was a lot of sanding and yeah, it's a veneer, but it's just pine veneer, knotty pine on top. Took it right back to bare pine. 
I think we're probably going to put a pretty dark stain on it to contrast with the white base, but again, we shall see how that goes. Still don't know why they put a pine veneer on top of what appears to be a pine top. I have pulled out the drawer and looked inside and it looks like pine from the bottom. I mean, if anything, maybe poplar, which would really not make any sense. I suppose it's possible that it's just pine around the edges and it's particle board in the middle. I don't know. Doesn't really matter at this point. So I did two layers of fill and sanding in between and then the third, I did a third little bit just to fill in a little bit and now I think it's ready for priming. These little dots just filled easily, now they feel smooth. So the whole thing's ready for some scuff sanding now and I don't really know what kind of finish this is so I'm definitely going to put some good primer down before I go on to painting. And I'm going to take the doors off. I'm not planning to paint the insides but I do want to paint the edges, which is why I'm taking everything out. It makes it easier too. The drawers are a weird story. It took me over an hour to figure out how to get the drawers out of this unit. There's no tracks there, so there's no release here. There's no release here. And you get here and you pull and nothing's coming. If you look underneath, you can see they're riding on a track there, but you pull it out to a certain point and there's no release. And of course I didn't want to break it, so I finally got to the point where I'm just pulling and pulling and pulling and it finally gave way. I've since learned that the best way to get these out is to bring it up to the edge, back it up a bit and give it a snap. Turns out there's this little bump catch at the back of the track of the drawer and that interfaces with this little piece of metal which is in the center track. This I think has a little bit of flex to it which is how I can jerk it out. But yeah, I never found drawers like this before. So I'm not actually sure if I should be doing the top first or second. I'm doing the top second so I'm planning to paint the bottom so I've taped off the top and I just sort of taped around the uh, where the doors are. I'm not taping where the drawers are going. I'm just hopefully going to <laughs> be careful with my painting. Uh, the drawers and the doors ready to go and I'm probably going to fade most of it this out because painting is about as boring as sanding is to watch. All right just a quick interlude on the cell phone. This is one coat of primer, two coats of white paint. It's looking pretty good, but I'm still doing at least a third coat. The doors you can especially in here. I think maybe I don't have a great quality brush or let's be honest, maybe I don't have great quality brush work. And the cabinet, it's looking pretty cool. Onward. Four coats of white. Now it's time for some stain on the top. For a stain, we did some test pieces of an ebony and an espresso, and my daughter-in-law likes the espresso, so we're going with a Verithane espresso, which is a gel type stain. And by gel, I mean it looks like pudding. I've only used gel stain once before, so I'm by no means an expert. One of the things it's nice about is it's really good for a vertical surface because it's not gonna run. But uh, other, otherwise it works the same. You wipe it on, you buff it off. You'll have to excuse the noise. This is a solvent based finish. So I've got my exhaust fan going. As you can see, it's not running down. And after a couple of minutes, wipe it off. And yes, we're going for a fairly dark finish, but you can still see a little bit of the grain through it. I didn't want to touch the camera with the uh, stain all over my hands, so I left it alone as I did the top but gonna be a lot of wiping it looks really black right now but it is wiping off it's now the next day so the finish has had a good 12 to 18 hours to dry it's looking really good and it's time now for the polyurethane top coat. And speaking of finish, let me just take a moment and I'll run through the product that I've been using. I know people are always interested in that. Um, for, the, for the initial stripping, I did not use a chemical stripper. I just used sandpaper. I started at like a 80 grit and then went to 120 and 150. On the lower case, I used the Zinzer Bullseye 123. It's a water-based primer, really good coverage. Over top of that, this is just bare cabinet and trim enamel white um, from the local big box store. On the top, this is, this is a solvent based finish. This is 472 Espresso Gel Stain from, from Verithane, which I think, let me just look that up. I think Verithane is a Rust-Oleum brand, but I'll double check that and I'll write that in here if I'm wrong. And on the top, I'm gonna to be using Verithane Diamond Wood Finish Water Base Semi-Gloss.
So I thought I was almost done. Got five coats of polyurethane on the top. It's looking great. The paint's done. My daughter-in-law picked out some knobs. And that's when I realized that I made a big mistake. You see, I just painted the front of the cabinet. I didn't paint any of the insides. And these drawers are inset and you can just see a dark line all the way around them. Like here on the middle drawer, and then here on the side drawer, it just doesn't look good. Breaking out the tape again and I will be just putting the tape there so that I can just paint along the inside edge for about, you know, three quarters of an inch inside all the way around. Okay, time for final steps. My daughter-in-law picked out some new hardware which I'm getting mounted onto the drawers and doors. Nice bronze finish to go against the white. I'm just reusing the hinges because they work fine. Now these are wood runners, so I'm taking a stub of candle and I'm just going to rub it back and forth and get some wax on those runners which should help the drawers run a bit smoothly for a while. So as a comparison, I have not put any wax on this one. This one runs quieter and runs just a bit slicker. <laughs> and yes, we're going with different hardware for the top and the bottom. For the bottom hardware, we're going with this simple bronze knob. And on the top, there's a matching finger pull, again, in a oil rubbed bronze finish. So quite the transformation, eh? I'll throw up a photo of where we started just to remind ourselves compared to where we are now. We got the top stripped down, stained with that espresso gel stain, and then several coats of polyurethane for a nice tough coating. Uh, sanded and painted the body of the cabinet white. The inside we've left alone in the natural pine finish. Changed the hardware for another fresh look. It's still a pine cabinet, so it's gonna get uh, those uh, little dents and, and um, weathering <laughs> overuse, but you know, it was, it was free, other than a little bit of paint and finish, and we've rescued something from the trash, and we've turned it into something new, and we should get a lot of years of use out of it, and that brings us to the end of this one. As always, thanks for stopping by. Hope you got some ideas out of it, and enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you on the next one.